Welcome back to the refinery for our new series titled In Spirit and in Truth. Have you ever heard a Christian use the phrase and wonder what exactly they're talking about? Or maybe you're a young Christian and you've heard your pastor, teacher, or maybe somebody in your church use this phrase and you're still scratching your head wondering what they're talking about. Trust me, I've been there, right? Uh, wherever you are in your understanding, this series is designed to help us better understand this phrase in spirit and in truth. So grab your chair and a cup of coffee and spend the next 10 minutes with me as we examine what it truly means to worship God in spirit and in truth. You know, the series surrounds around Jesus' statement in the Gospel of John, and it reads this. And I'm going to be reading, if you haven't, uh, if I haven't talked about this or you haven't watched one of our previous videos, I'm going to be reading using the Version app. Specifically for me, I like to read from the ESV version, and um, you can download that from the App Store or Google Play for your phone. Super awesome to have. You can see the screen right there. And it's a great resource for you and for me and for everybody to study the Word of God and get involved in devotionals. So today we're looking at God, the Gospel of John, which is um, the essentially it's a story written about Jesus from the perspective of John, who was inspired by God to write it. And John had witnessed Jesus' ministry. And he's literally writing about something that Jesus himself said in John chapter 4. And this is what it says. It says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Then Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, am he. For the Christian, this passage right here is the foundation of worship. Here Jesus tells us that true worshipers will worship God the Father in spirit and in truth. But what do these two phrases mean, right? What does in spirit mean and what does in truth mean? Well, let's take a little look deeper. I've introduced, or I haven't introduced you guys. Sorry, sometimes I stumble in my words. I haven't introduced you guys yet to commentaries on our channel, but today's that day. A commentary is simply this. It's a set of explanatory or critical notes about a particular text. And so um, today we're going to take a look at a commentary that was written about John chapter 4. And commentaries are an important piece of our study to the Bible. Not because we can't reach an understanding from our own reading, but because there's value in linking together with other believers, and especially believers who have been called specifically to, to do what a lot of these men and women have done in writing these commentaries, and hearing and seeing and believing in a verse or a group of verses in the same manner, right? Um, I, it's important for me to know that there are other people out there that are seeing the same things that I'm seeing and believing the same things that I'm believing when I'm reading a particular passage. And so that's what we want to do when we look at John chapter 4. We want to arrive at the same interpretation, uh, same interpretation as other people, right? The odds are if, if there's 10 of us and only one of us has an interpretation, the odds are that that one is, is probably not interpreting it right. may not always be the case, but the majority of the time it will be. And, and it's, you know, unfortunately it's what has caused the variety of, of Christian denominations in our world today, um, differences in interpretation. But we're all trying to do one thing, and that's what Second Timothy chapter 2 tells us. We're, we're trying to study to show ourselves approved. So David Hawking writes this in his commentary about John chapter 4. He says, there are many acts of worship, but the question is, what is going on in our heart? It has to be in the spirit and in truth. The truth that we know is from the word of God. You want to know the truth about what worship should be? Hey, read God's word and let the word control your thoughts, your praise, your prayer. Let the word dominate your life. We worship God in the realm of spirit, inside and in the realm of truth. So, you know, many people think the word here in this particular passage from John, the word 
spirit is speaking specifically about the Holy Spirit. But such is not the case. Hawking actually talks about this as well. The Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, is certainly essential to Christianity. And we see the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in each one of us, especially as we worship. But Jesus was simply helping this Samaritan woman that he was talking to in this passage see that the words in spirit are in contrast to the words in flesh. We should, and, and I guess in English, we would say it like this, inward versus outward. So the principle here is that adoration and worship for God must come from the heart. It's not about what we do externally, you know, raising our hands or singing loudly or even dancing like David would have done, but rather it is our heart right towards God. Is our heart right towards God? And our spirit, is our spirit man in the right condition, right? Or do we have some sin that we need to lay at God's feet? Because sometimes when we're not worshiping in spirit, the problem is sin has gotten in the way. We've come into the church or we, wherever we are that we're worshiping God and, and we have an unrepentant sin. So in spirit means worshiping God internally versus externally. And then that second phrase, in truth, is exactly like it sounds, right? And in, as Hawking noted, we allow the truth of God written in his word to influence the way we worship. We don't make up our own thoughts. We let the word of God and God's truth control all that we say, and all that we do. As, as the word says, whether we eat and drink or whatever we do, we do it all for the glory of God. This is the foundation on which we worship in spirit, internally, as our heart right, and in truth, allowing the word of God to inform our worship day after day after day. I pray that this video has helped you reach a better understanding of Jesus' statement in John as he was talking to this woman. And it's helped you understand the foundation for this new series in spirit and in truth. You know, our goal here is to become more refined followers of Jesus Christ. And I hope that this video has helped you. And I pray that you don't waste another day, that if you don't know Jesus, today be the day. Because in Romans, it tells us, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on his name. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call upon his name. And if you have questions, don't be afraid to reach out to us here at the refinery. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.